you know, you, you get more known the longer you do it, the more you put out. You, you build a reputation, you get more known, approaching people becomes easier, of course. You know, they already know you before you, you know, you're not trying to sell yourself. You, they, they're already familiar with your work. A lot of times they're already fans of your work. So as time went on, as we built up our fan base, some of the people we started to interview were, were basically just, you know, they were fans. They just happened to be famous themselves. Um, but but there, there wasn't, you know, like how, how do I really describe it? it it's, it's, a, it's, it's just a process that you just kind of keep doing over and over again. Um, that, that there is not, you know, like a, a lot of, the, a lot of the, uh, the thought behind what we do is, uh, well, we're not, we're not on the radio, right? We don't have clear channel. You know, or I guess it's called iHeart uh, behind us, which is a huge radio conglomerate that has hundreds of stations. You know, when you see a lot of these big celebrities, when they go to the same radio stations over and over again, it's not because they particularly love that radio station. It's because, okay, look, th there's deals that are being made. Come do this interview, you know, at our New York, you know, station. And we'll play your song a hundred times a day in these hundred stations. So we can't offer people that. Um, so a lot of times people will, will skip over us to go to a radio station, even though we'll, we'll give them more exposure. But it's not about that. It's about getting the song played, right? So you kind of have to sit, you know, you sit back and you say, okay, what type of people can we interview that everyone else is ignoring? Point blank. Like, what can we do that everyone else is not doing? And that's when we started to sort of build up our regular guests, you know, people like Lord Jamar, who, who became one of our first regular guests. He was part of a very popular group in the 90s called Brand Nubian, but the group hadn't had a hit in a very long time. And, you know, they were still touring and they were still kind of, you know, a group, but they weren't all that visible. But I started to notice that he was very outspoken on his social media. So we brought him in for one interview, which turned into two interviews, so it's now turned into hundreds of interviews. Um, and this is someone who was just sitting around waiting for something to do. And by us utilizing this, you know, this resource that, that was being, you know, kind of overlooked by everyone else, we've turned around and we, we've gotten probably hundreds of millions of people to watch this guy, you know, which not only helps out our company, but then that brought so much exposure to him and his group that that made his touring uh, go up. You know, he, he started to get booked on a whole lot more. So it became a thing where, you know, we want to do interviews together because everyone wins. And that, that was kind of the thing of focus on the people that everyone else is ignoring. And, you know, a lot of times our interviews of people that you've never heard of before, like literally nobody's ever heard of this person outside of their own immediate friends and family, you know, like a mob James, for example. So one of the guys that uh, was part of the blood, you know, kind of brought in all the bloods into, uh, into death row with Suge Knight. He's the one that kind of created that whole gangster element at death row, which ultimately, you know, imploded the company, but he had such a powerful story. You know, he, his, his own brother got killed in the process of doing all this. His other friends got killed. A lot of people went to prison. It was such an emotional story. He started to cry at the point, you know, telling the part about losing, his, you know, his brother and so forth. That that became, I think, like maybe the third biggest interview of last year. Um, you know, 15 million people watched it with someone who they've never heard of before, but the story was that good that you had to watch it. And now that guy has become a regular guest on the show. And this was someone that anybody could have interviewed that really just didn't bother to, to, to look into their story. And that, that was the whole thing of, we started to realize over time that our biggest interviews came from unknown people that were somewhat unknown to the public. And, you know, when we bring in the bigger stars, like let's say, you know, we'd interview like a Rich the Kid recently who has sold millions, of, you know, he's had platinum singles and platinum albums and songs with Kendrick and everyone else like that. He came in 
And the publicist said, well, don't ask about this. Don't ask about this. Don't ask about this. If you ask about this, we'll end the interview. And so you, you're coming in under very limited constraints where you can't really do the type of interview you want. He's very guarded himself. He doesn't really want to be open and, and answer a bunch of interview, you know, a bunch of questions honestly. So you get this very inauthentic uh, piece that you end up putting out, and it ends up not doing as well as someone who is is not known at all. <laughs> Whereas this guy, who everybody knows about, if it's a shitty interview, it's a shitty interview. Um, the, the the stature sometimes doesn't matter, and that that was kind of the thing that I feel like we went a different direction than most everybody else. And then over time, you know, people saw the, the blueprint of what we did. And you have these other companies um, like say cheese TV or no jumper that have formed that, you know, and I've interviewed these guys on my show and they've said like, you know, we used to watch flat TV and that inspired us to create our own platforms. And, and they've done really well with that platform, you know, really well. And, and I'm happy for him. I don't look at it as competition. I'm, I'm happy that we kind of helped spark the guy, you know, like Sean Khan from Say Cheese TV that was working at Best Buy that was watching my interviews on his phone on his lunch break. And he turned around and built a similar company off of this idea. And now he's, he's doing great. So that's, that's, I, I love to hear stories like that.